and shake the whole body up. A 50 year old gas strut would not work anymore. Who's your daddy? What does he do? What's up guys? Welcome back to Street Bandita. We have a new project here. It's actually a customer of ours. We're gonna be doing a full restoration, interior, exterior, replacing some panels with carbon panels, replacing some rusty old metal with uh, fresh, brand new metal. Ooh. So stay tuned. We're gonna walk you through the process of completely restoring a Nissan Z. So the overall plan for this build, uh, Patrick is going to put an LS-based engine in it of some sort. Um, we are not going to be doing that here. He's going to do that himself. So what we're going to do is get him a, run, a rolling chassis. Um, it is going to be painted, but it's going to have a bunch of carbon panels like we talked about. Um, so all the Z guys that have been waiting for us to finalize and finish development on all the panels that we talked about making, because there's a big gap in the market, we will be making them first for this guy's car and then continuing on. So fenders, headlight buckets, cowl, doors, quarter panels, we already have the roof. Um, and then we'll also go to hoods and hatches. When you have a car like this and you wanna restore it, obviously the first thing you wanna do is get all the glass out of it, get the suspension out of it, which we just did. Uh, Patrick delivered this to us with pretty much no interior, just had the steering column and stuff like that. So we've already removed that. We kept the rear suspension in for right now. Um, I really just wanna to get to the worst part about restoring stuff like that, which is dealing with rust. The main thing we got to focus on is his floors are completely made out of fiberglass right now because they were rusty and somebody decided to just do that instead of replacing them. Um, he's got some big holes in his firewall under the battery tray. And then probably the worst of all um, is this driver's side frame rail. Yeah, so you can see it's a bit of an angle iron or something like that welded in there. We have a replacement rail from KF Vintage. Um, they make a whole slew of parts for Z cars, which is awesome. But what we're gonna start with is replacing driver's frame rail. Start with the worst first, go from there. I'll do this like 20 times on a car like this, something with like hail damage. You gotta look at it from like eight different angles. You gotta follow all the little lights reflecting with your eyes closed, eye closed. So really, you're saying that you would save money by replacing your roof with a carbon roof. Because I would charge more to repair it. <laughs> One day we're gonna have to spend a life in Greg's world. You know that man, he see a lot of bodies. You know what I've been doing today? What? Sand in the limousine for a funeral home since 5.45 this morning. I could tell from your face reaction right now, you look it's miserable. <laughs> I'm just pulling the Corvette and I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna get it up. Maybe replace the lower control arm. Coming in the morning, align it.
Rusty Boys. That's where they must not have had like a preset amount of spot welds. Cause there's like a spot weld here, a spot weld right next to it. The one here, the one all the way over here, here and here. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, right next to each other. Or they were supposed to be separated. They didn't get both. In Japan, in the 70s, like, hopefully this battery's charged. frame rail we're trying to separate from this sheet right now they already separated naturally this whatever is this now the backwards this is this you take these two bolts out of here these are normal drill bits. These are probably way better. That's a. They're both well. It's both spot weld. Okay. Because the sides are higher. These are too long, like too short sometimes too. So that's nice. Yeah, I don't. And these ones have a flat spot on the shank. Yeah. yeah these ones is, are perfect circles. That's good. So you come bearing gifts. Yep. Titanium so nitride like coated. Do you need one of those cutting blades? Hmm. I swapped. Yeah. Is it? No, no, the, uh, the handle tool with like the hook blade. The really oh. They use to like cut through the yeah. spot wall. I could use one of those. This thing works pretty well, honestly, but. Um, some complicated shit up in this corner. It's like a Honda. Oh, the disrespect. They're the worst, dude. Their radiator supports are so stupid. They got like a normal radiator support like every other car and then they're like, hey, we're gonna throw in this box off the side that goes up. It's the first thing that you hit every time. It always bends, you have to replace it, and it's really annoying because it's like a bunch of hidden spot welds. You gotta take that off to get to the spot welds and then weld that piece back on. I can't question you. And you do this every day. And the way that they build their cars, they yeah. hit every time they crash in the front. Good thing I drive a Chevy. Yep. You should just told us. <laughs> cool. Okay. So this is the piece we want to get out here. Usually I would put a slice across here and fold it back like I just did, but it already had cracked just from, from time. Time and probably more toes. So I need to continue with the spot welds on this side and then hit this corner too. We got maybe like, you know, 40% of the way and then the battery died, but now it's back.
All right, so it's a mess in here, but we got Albert here grinding all day. Um, the battery tray repair section and firewall repair section are in. Driver's floor is in. Which is what Albert's been grinding for the past hour. Um, and then uh, I do want to show this cool little tool. Cool, so this tool I borrowed from Greg actually has two functions. But this side right here is pretty much a hole punch for sheet metal. And we're plug welding this whole thing, so you just kind of line it up. Sometimes if it's a thicker piece, it takes two. Pop it on in there. Yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and punch a hole in this whole section all the way around. We've already completely cut out and ground and prepped the area that we're gonna be welding to. Um, and then we can knock this out and all of the rust repair panels are done. We have all the panels welded in. These KF Vintage panels have been awesome to work with actually. We have the front frame rail welded in. We have the traction control rod mount welded back in. Uh, full frame rail, floor pans, drivers and passenger side. We have the battery tray area they're still shipping us. The, the actual battery tray, so that's not installed yet. But the apron area, like around the uh, suspension pickup point and stuff like that, has all been repaired. And the passenger firewall section in general. So all of the rust is gone, except for when we took the quarter panels off, we realized that the insides of the rocker panels are also rusty. Which, I mean, on almost all Z's, like the back dog leg section. They're all rusty. So we're going to eventually replace those. But all in all, this was uh, not too bad. I mean, it's a lot of time. Probably looks like no time at all through YouTube. But Months and months yeah, later. It's, it's been a good bit of time that we've been working on this and other little projects. But it's ready to finally get some carbon panels. So in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and work on making the very first carbon panel for this with a new type of carbon fiber that fiberglass just started carrying. So. I'm excited to do that, so check in next episode.